Hey guys, Pastor Darren here at Seattle Revival Center. I'll tell you a quick story. At the beginning of 2016, the Lord spoke to me and said, You're doing local church well, but I've called you to be a revival center. So we retreated along with our leadership team to have a weekend to just pray into, discuss, and strategize what is revival and what does a revival center look like. But little did we know, that same weekend, Jeremy and Miranda Nelson were hosting a conference called Decree Conference. It was supposed to go three days, but it didn't end. We quickly learned about what God was doing in San Diego. We sent our leadership team to go. Uh, there was one particular night when Jeremy Nelson had our team stand. He said, Washington, please stand. Jeremy saw in the spirit a massive apple and he began to declare that the apple wine is going to begin flowing in Washington State. It's the wine of his peace. It's the wine of his intimacy. And indeed, it's a very intoxicating wine. <laughs> Man, our team went flying. Uh, they were blasted. They came hands. <laughs> they came home. They began laying hands on people back here in Seattle and revival broke out that was one week before our very own conference are you ready for this <laughs> called declaration conference it likewise was supposed to be a three-day event but it didn't and what we are going after <laughs> is not a purpose within his presence what we are stating is that his presence is the purpose we are indeed attempting to create atmospheres where God shows up and guess what night after night he keeps showing up and he keeps showing off people are getting healed people are getting saved people are getting delivered from drugs and demons and all kinds of stuff indeed <laughs> this is one of the most exciting times to be alive the Holy Spirit is moving on the face of the earth and like Joshua Mills said right at the very beginning if you want to be a part of what God is doing all you have to say is yes it's such an honor to have you on tonight's broadcast we hope you enjoy what God is doing here in Seattle we would invite you to engage by sending up your prayer request by clicking the link um, also you can chat. There's this amazing community of people on here um, at srclive.com. Uh, let us know how we can be praying for you. Celebrate each other when God answers prayer. The only thing that we would ask is that you wouldn't use the chat as a platform to promote your ministry or to sell a product. Um, it's really just a community where we can celebrate each other uh, in the Lord. We would also ask that when the time comes that you would engage by giving into what God is doing here in Seattle. So when it comes time to give, pray and ask the Lord what He would have you give and so intentionally into this move knowing that you are going to reap something special and significant because you're sowing into good soil. So we would ask that you would pray and consider giving tonight into what the Lord is doing here in Seattle, the apple wine awakening know this we are cheering you on please let us know how we can be praying for you and how we can partner with however the lord is moving in your home in your church in your city in your state and remember you are absolutely loved it's about to get crazy i'm so glad you're here uh, let's stay in touch let's get to the service hello everyone hello everyone you ready to go jump up to your feet we're gonna open in prayer I found these three kids out in the street and I rescued them. I think. I... Do you guys want to help me pray tonight? Yeah, Sophia, you want to pray first? No? All right. You... Okay, here we go. Uh, grab the hand of someone next to you. Friends don't let friends pray alone, right? right? <laughs> no. Thank you, Jesus. All right, go ahead, Epps. That we can all be together and share the good news of Jesus. And thank you that you heal people and make the light shine brightly in every single church. And thank you that people will get healed and that the fire flaming God will come down. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, let us have a good day today and help that the Lord comes tonight and hope that who's ever hurt feel better. Amen. So Jesus, we love you. 
we love your presence. We love what you're doing. So we just prepare our hearts just to have an encounter with you tonight. So we just welcome you, Jesus. We just welcome your angels tonight. We just welcome your presence. We just say, have your way, Jesus. You have your way tonight. And we just declare we are the we're the people of your pasture. We are your sheep. And you are our shepherd. And we love you, Jesus, and we trust you, Jesus. You are our Lord. You are our God. You are our King. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Yes, amen. All right, let's go.
step inside, we step inside, we step inside. Oh, there's colors in this life we've not yet seen. There's colors in the light we've not yet seen. There's colors in the light we've not yet seen. All the colors are swirling around. All oh, is healing in the light we've not yet known. There's healing in the light we've not yet known. Try! 
Let's stand to our feet tonight. Just join in the declaration tonight. Join in with this proclamation. There's an invitation tonight to cross beyond the threshold. Come in. Come in tonight. Lift up your voice. Glory.
Who dwells? 
Would you stand? Just repeat after me if you would. Just say, I'm in transition. I'm in a season of transition. I'm changing. I'm growing. I'm coming into a new place. By His grace. I'm stepping out of the familiar. I'm stepping into the unknown. I'm stepping out of the darkness. Out of the chaos. Out of stress. Out of worry. Out of fear. Out of anxiety. I'm stepping into a new light. I'm stepping into His frequency. I'm stepping into a new economy. I'm stepping into a new liberty. I'm coming up into new places to experience new graces. To st I'm stepping into a new identity, a revelation of my authority. I'm in a season of transition. I'm stepping out of the out of the known into the unknown and there's no fear in me there's no fear in me there's no place for fear in me just declare I'm not alone you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you're preparing for me a table in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows and surely goodness and mercy goodness and mercy goodness and mercy I'm a son of goodness I'm a child of mercy I will walk in goodness I will walk in the father's goodness I will walk in his mercy goodness and 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 mercy I'm walking in a different reality it's not of this world it's not of the wine of this world it's the wine of heaven it's that new wine it's the wine of his intimacy it's the wine of his peace it's the apple of his eye I am the apple of his eye underneath the apple tree he is awake me he has awakened me he's opening my eyes he's opening my ears he's given me a new heart he's taken my heart of stone he's given me a heart of flesh yeah I'm not in a battle anymore I'm in my father's arms I'm in my papa's arms I'm not in a wilderness anymore no I'm at a banqueting table and his banner over me is love 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 <laughs> yeah his banner over me he's singing love songs over me he's singing love songs he's in love he's in love with me and I'm in love I'm in love with him I'm not in a battle I'm at a wedding I'm at a wedding and my eyes are on my bridegroom here he comes 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 get your eyes off the enemy and get your eyes onto the bridegroom get your eyes onto Jesus here he comes twirling and dancing leaping 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 for his beloved leaping here he comes here he comes hey yeah 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 just declare he's coming for me he's coming for me he's coming for me hey <laughs> Look at Jesus tonight. Just take a big drink right now of his love. Just take a big drink right now of his love. 
You are, you are so lovely. <laughs> you can drink his love. Just take a big drink of his intoxicating love for you. Just take a big drink of his love. Just take a big drink by faith. Just declare, I'm intoxicated in his love. I'm intoxicated in his kisses. Your love is better than wine. Your love is better than wine. (laughs) Yeah. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. Ah, yeah. All right. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day. Hey guys, Pastor Darren here at Seattle Revival Center. Tell you a quick story. It's a good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. A good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. It's a good, good day to be a child of God. Ah, 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 all right. Well, it's a good day to be a child. Well, it's a good, good day. Well, it's a good, good day to be a child of God. Ah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, all right, yeah. I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. I don't have to run. I don't have to hide. This I know. I'm on the winning side. 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 I'm on the winning side Well, I don't gotta run No, I don't gotta hide Well, this I know I'm on the winning side 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 Well, I don't gotta run No, I don't gotta hide Well, this I know I'm on the winning side On the winning side I'm on the winning side This I know I don't got to hide I'm on the win. It's a bad day to be a demon. It's a bad day to be depression. It's a bad, bad day to be pain in your body. Because all those things, they under his authority. It's a bad, bad day to be a principality of darkness. It's a bad, bad day. <laughs> To partner with the enemy because this I know I'm on the winning side you're on the winning side oh you don't gotta run you don't gotta hide no step into the light and end that fight 
this I know We're children of light We're on the winning side We're on the winning side Whoa. <laughs> Yeah You don't gotta fight We're children of light Children of light Oh, just go ahead and just take a deep breath Take a deep breath. Yeah. Look at the person next to you and say, what you came here for, you probably already got. How you feeling? And introduce yourself. Give them a high five. Many of you, check out your body because many of you were healed even during worship tonight. How many of you already just feel better? Wave at me. You just, you just feel better already. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that good? If you're watching online tonight, hello. It's good to see you. God bless you. Get ready because Jesus is about to invade your car, your house, your territory, your region. Yep, yep, yep. Let's give a big hand to Elizabeth Cooper and this incredible worship team. Wasn't that awesome? Man, I just love what they bring. Come on, Michael Danforth is in the house tonight. Jesus is here tonight. Oh, we had a graduation last night celebrating our School of Supernatural Ministry. And we just had a great time celebrating those amazing students, celebrating Matt and Jeanette and just the, their incredible leadership. And uh, Michael Danforth brought an incredible word. If you didn't hear it, just go on to Facebook and, uh, and watch it. If, if you don't like Seattle Revival Center on Facebook, uh, go and like it. If you're like, what's Facebook? I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, just Google it. And if you don't know what Google is, then we'll have an altar call at the end of the meeting. But um, yeah, but go and watch that word from uh, Michael last night. That, that was that was really, really good. And I, I got good news. Jesus is alive. Uh, yeah, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And he's doing some really cool stuff in his church. And he's doing some really cool stuff in the Pacific Northwest. And he's doing some great stuff in you and in your family. Do you believe that? Yeah, do you believe that? Just look at the person sitting next to you and say, Jesus is doing something in you. Jesus is doing something in you. Jesus is doing something in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. Well, it's a real honor to, uh, uh, to, to welcome our executive pastor. He is such a gift uh, to this church, the Seattle Revival Center, um, and he's going to be taking the offering tonight. Would you just give a warm welcome to Pastor Keith tonight as he comes? Thank you. Wasn't that awesome? Wow. We went places tonight. Yeah. And I just trust you've been inspired to just sow into the atmosphere of revival that God is bringing here and the atmosphere of healing and wholeness and all that he's doing. Even as, uh, as we worshiped, the, the, the spirit of the Lord was touching your life and, 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 and uh, ministering to individuals and setting people free and, and not just here in this house, but reaching out over the... Uh, the streaming and uh, people in their homes were being touched as as that worship was going on and so it, there's instructions on the screen for how to give and uh, you can make a check payable to, to SRC of course you can uh, use cash you can um, there's credit card information there please write legibly if you're going to uh, be especially if you're putting in a credit card or debit card and uh, God bless you as you give let's just pray and then uh, these baskets are here and you can come and fill them up. Father, thank you for 
the presence of your, your power here tonight, that you are here in our midst, and we just give you praise for that. We just pray that as we would bring our offerings to you tonight, that you would just take and multiply them for uh, reaching out for the sake of your kingdom, and we just give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. Jeanette, would you come? Big breath. <laughs> okay, we're going to just do a couple of quick announcements and get Michael Danforth going here. Uh, can hardly wait. So, first off, we have to remember something very important. Sunday night, this weekend, there's no Apple Wine Awakening meeting. Tomorrow night is our last night with Michael Danforth, and then we break. Because, we, for one, we need Father's Day, right? We're going to celebrate fathers, and, um, and I'm, uh, yeah. So one really cool way the Lord's been talking to me about celebrating fathers is looking for someone who just needs to know their heavenly father. And that would be, there'd be no better way of spending Sunday than, than asking the Lord to show you just one person who really needs to know their heavenly father and everything else in their life that they're yearning for will be put right. And, um, and so anyway, that was my little... Revy for the day. Okay. <laughs> so remember that, right? No Sunday night service. And then we're taking a break. We're going to take a summer break um, for all the right reasons. Because God likes breaks. He likes rest. God's into rest. He's got things that are set aside for you just for when you rest. With, and go after what he has. When you turn your attention towards him in a rest, he actually gives you things that you don't slow down enough in regular life in a regular day to receive. So, um, so I, it's going to be a time of rest, but it's also a time of pouring out. Um, everything that you've received during this season of meetings, um, I just love the way the flow is happening here. You know, Holy Spirit doesn't leave. The presence of God doesn't leave the auditorium. He's not going anywhere, but we need to go somewhere. And, <laughs> and, and so figure out what that is and do it while we're on a break. So listen, so we have um, the rest of June off and then all of July. And then we're coming back for a summer camp meeting, right? Okay, good. I know you're still there. I, I see you. Yeah, you're there. Okay, good. You're there. Okay, good. Summer camp meeting, August 6th through the 13th, Sunday through Sunday. We have Steve Swanson going to be doing worship twice a day, 10 o'clock in the morning, 7 at night. And God's bringing in an awesome men of God, men and women of God, that for a d divine purpose. There's a divine purpose about the order of their coming, about why they're coming, and, and a, it's just a, going to be a, t a really awesome week to set aside. I don't like to say the word awesome all the time. I got a new word. Okay. Um, but, but you know when you know, you know sometimes you just know, that's all I want to say about it anymore. When you know that you know that God's about to do something. That we know that we know that God is about to do something new and there's a shift. We, I'm tired of that word too. I'm just, maybe the, because I'm in transition, I'm tired of all the same words. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But, um, but I just know that we, we know that we know that God's doing something important. So I'm just saying that just to encourage you to set some time aside to come. If you can't come the whole week, um, pick a couple of nights or, or whatever. There's um, cards that will remind you of it, of what the schedule is. There are behind the chairs, and there's also some in the kiosk on the way out. So if you don't have one of these already, grab one. Put them on your fridge so you don't forget. Um, you will be getting, a, you know, really nice, cool emails from me to remind you a couple times and, about it. And actually take a couple extra and give them to some friends or or people you know that are your enemies but they really need god <laughs> give them one it might just be what they need so um that's it right that's it that's good and um and uh, um that's going to be an awesome week in august and I, I just drank too much during the meeting i'm sorry i can't think like real clear so um we're going we're gonna to be back in september after labor day with awesome, awesome meetings, and we're, we're going <laughs> to, Justin Abraham, John Scotland, and Godfrey Bertel, worship. It's going to be an awesome weekend there. So um, anyway, hey, I love you guys. Thank you. You're cool. Okay. 
And now I welcome our wonderful, beloved Sandy Hondo, who's going to come. Right, Pastor Sandy? Here you come. She's coming. There you go. I love her. Good job, Jeanette. Good job. Well, it's my privilege to introduce our speaker tonight, which probably most of you know. Anybody haven't heard Michael? Anybody in the room? Just a couple of you. Oh, you're in for a treat. So I want to tell you, Michael has, um, I'm probably taking some of Tamara's plugs here, but Michael has a ministry called, uh, Michael and Tamara, a ministry called uh, Kingdom Creations, Creations with a K. You can get onto YouTube, and you can lay down on the floor in your bedroom, and you can go to heaven for about 20 hours a day if you just listen to <laughs> one YouTube video after another, which is what I d I've been doing. <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm serious. There is meaty, revelatory, right now stuff on, in Michael's teaching that, that um, we, we all should be listening to. Because things are changing. And even tonight, there was an invitation. There was an invitation into um, the heart of God, into eternity, into to step into the unseen, which we're all craving for, but we have to learn and, and we have to be taught how to do that. And Michael does a, just a wonderful job of teaching things that release you in, and go, getting into, stepping into those places. And so, um, so Kingdom Creation on YouTube. Uh, Michael and Tamara live in Yakima right now, and uh, Michael is a teacher, a prophet, a uh, an oracle, a king, <laughs> a priest, you know. <laughs> Just, uh, we, we've been really blessed to, to know him and to get him over here from Yakima. So, Michael, we just want to, I just, I know Matt said this to you, but we just want to say thank you. We just want to say we honor you. We honor the gift that you are to the, to the body of Christ. We honor the person that you are. We honor you as a friend and a son in this house. And come on up, come on up. Help me welcome Michael. Yeah, uh, can I get another muscle here? This thing, like, weighs as much as a house. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, that was awesome. Now, I'm, it's not too often, probably should be more often. Um. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. Um. Okay. I just so appreciate um, the sound, you know, the realms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, it, it opened. I don't even think I used the right combo and it opened anyhow. So, God knows I need a lot of help. Um, so, um, yeah, it's good to be here. Um, uh, we just love this place. We love you. And uh, we love what God's doing. And um, I'm not sure if I need my glasses or... Yes. Are my glasses dirty? <laughs> I I feel hot. Can't... Uh, 
Um, do you guys feel hot? <laughs> okay, anybody knows me, I'm not normally like this. Um, <laughs> Jesus. I really have some good days <laughs> this year. <laughs> it's really hot. And did you, you feel? <laughs> I need to, I need to have a drink. Okay, so, <laughs> um, I gotta, I gotta say this. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it just feels really warm. <laughs> um, maybe it's that light, that that one right there. Um. So um, I was observing some angelic activity that was going on, and I just want to draw some attention to that. Um, the, the, the first stage of it was like there was this, this carpet that was rolled out here and it represented ministry. And I saw him come in and he rolled it up. And then another one was right behind him and he unrolled like a new, like a new carpet, like a new runway, so to speak. And, um, so all of a sudden I realized that when I, when I looked up, I was just looking by the Spirit, and I saw the heavens being rolled up. And, and I'm, I'm going to read to you a couple passages of Scripture, and, and my intention is not to take them out of context, because I realize that they reflect something that has happened and will happen. And, um, but I saw the heavens being rolled up. And... Um, What's happening is, is that, uh, well, let me read the passage out of Isaiah. Some of you are familiar with this, that um, out of Isaiah 30, <laughs> 34, 4, 34, 4, and, um, and all the host of heaven will wear away and the sky will be rolled up like a scroll. And their host will also wither away as a leaf withers from the vine or as one withers from the fig tree. Another passage of Scripture in Revelation six fourteen reads, The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And then the kings of the earth... And the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong. And every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, follow on us, hide, hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of the Lord has come and who is able to stand so, um, um, I know oftentimes when we think of this, we think of this in context of something dark and gloomy, and um, I remember years ago speaking about the day of the Lord because the day of the Lord was conceived as something that, uh, that was dark, but it's actually the day of the Lord, not the night of the Lord, and so therefore... <laughs> <laughs> the day of the Lord is in relation to light, not darkness, and that we are coming more and more 
into the day of the Lord, into the light of God. And even as the songs and, and the worship, the sound that was being orchestrated, that it, that it started out un, unrolling the light, you know, revealing the light. And I kept hearing the echo of that, let there be light. But this unusual light that is, that is being released in the earth, it's overriding the illusion of darkness because darkness that we perceive as darkness is just that. It is an illusion. But something is about ready to happen in the heavens above where there is a rolling up that is about ready to take place. That means rolling up something old and unrolling something new, which is the government of heaven appearing on the earth and closing what was perceived to be a gap between heaven and earth. And I often look at that and I often say that that gap is actually an illusion when in fact the kingdom of God, the life of God, the spirit of God, heaven itself is in you. And therefore, the fact that you are in this realm and you are also seated in heavenly places means that one is already overlapping the other and the gap is narrowing because of the increasing glory that you are entering into and that is rising up inside of you. And so I was looking at this and realizing that something intense is happening because of what has been going on in the spirit because of the places that we're occupying and have been occupying for years but now we're beginning to see an unusual manifestation of an unusual occupation that has taken place and and so therefore we're not looking for a, a move we're not looking for another wave of the spirit we're actually recognizing that what we are in is is a time of habitation not visitation the times of visitation have come to come and gone. In fact, they've been rolled up. And, and what they were intended for, they did. What they were going to bring, they brought. But now we have entered into this time and season where God is saying, now I'm inhabiting, you are inhabiting. And so many people are, it's, we're even getting beyond and I'm going to say things that I might not even understand myself what I'm saying. But when God spoke to John and said, you know, come up here, we're even getting beyond the invitation to be called up. We're just going up. In other words, there was an, it's an open invitation to where it created such a, a change in the polarity that now we are literally just being lifted up. And there were sounds that are rising up in the earth that literally like an elevator. I felt like tonight I was in the elevator and just being lifted up. See, we're already lifted up in heavenly places. So when I say being lifted up, what I'm saying is being lifted up into the awareness of our seated place in the kingdom of God in Jesus. And so we're being lifted up into this awareness of the kingdom of God, of our authority, of our enthronement. And to the degree that we are becoming aware of that is the degree that that awareness is actually revealing this glory and this power in the earth. We're coming out of an ancient labor where we've been, been having to labor for things, trying to make things happen, trying to get it to do this and to do that. So we're literally entering into this realm where we just begin to think on the kingdom of God. We think on the things of God. We think on these things that are from above and not from below. And there is an authority, there is a kingdom rule that becomes apparent to all those around so right now we are in a time where God is rolling up old governments. The government that we have understood in times past, even in this nation and other nations of the world, we are in a rolling up process. Right now, old governments are being rolled up. They're trying to stay alive. They're trying to hang on. They're trying to do everything that they can possibly do to, to lay, keep hold of this territory that they believe that is their, uh, theirs. But the Lord is saying that time is over. That rule is over. And it's just like the government that was the law when it was upon the land and a new government came into the earth. And Jesus was saying, now there is no condemnation. I'm removing that old thing and bringing you into this new covenant in me so we are part of the rolling up of old governments that means that we are that we're rolling up old doctrines 
you know, old doctrines that have not been true in the sense of the intent of God, the desire of God for his people, indoctrinations that have led people into a place to where they felt bound and could not, you know, know the freedom of God, the life of God. Now those old doctrines, those old, uh, those old uh, teachings that kept people in place are now being rolled up. Rolling up false doctrines and rolling up sicknesses and diseases. We are now entering into a time where there is such a revelation knowledge that both in the natural and the spirit, the Bible says that all good things come from above. And now there is a technology, there is a revelation knowledge that is going to literally cut at the heart of every sickness and disease where literally all of the understandings that seem to stand in the way and keep that from happening are now being rolled up. And there is a rolling out of a revelation of an understanding of a health that is being released upon the earth like we've never known. And that is in conjunction with all of this supernatural realm that even as we were in worship, I, I just so, you know, I'm such a worshiper. I just love, I love the authenticity of worship. I love the purity of it. I love the, the enthronement of it. I love the sounds, the garments, all of these different things that, that go on in that moment. But I was just leaning into this and I was sensing and I remembered a word in that moment that the Lord had spoken to me years back. He said, the time will come as this increasing glory rises up as you engage with me and as it increases in you and flows out of you that the very creatures that move around the throne will begin to move in this realm. Because what happens is, is that there are glory, or what I call glorious creatures, and it's like fish in the sea. They live in an atmosphere. They breathe in that atmosphere. And when that atmosphere begins to increase, and they begin to manifest wherever that atmosphere is at. And now this increasing glory that is rising up in the land, now imagine that all of these creatures that manifest the glory of God, suddenly they become visible in this place. And it's twofold. It's because now we're, we're, being, we're really seeing our elevation in the kingdom of God and our eyes are being opened up to this glory, this present glory. But at the same time, it is actually the merging. The, the gap closes and, it, and it's this meeting him in the air. And it's not like some return that others have preached in time past. But what it is, it's glory touching glory. And that we're literally meeting the glory Glory is meeting in the air, in the breath, in the spirit of God. And in that moment of a greater meet, in the moment of a greater connection, there is a manifestation of all of creation that begins to reveal this intense reality of who God is. It overrides the paradigms that have stood in our way, that have tried to cloud our vision have tried to cloud the reality of who we are as sons and daughters of God. Even now as I stand in this place, I see this unusual crowning that is going on. You are repeatedly crowned over and over again. Not just this crown of life, which is huge and glorious, but these crowns that, you, that are constantly being released, constantly being given to mark the intensity of the life and the glory of God. That is upon us. So that, that was part of it. Jesus. I felt like I wanted to talk a little bit because of just how some things are shifting some things that are going, I, I wanted to put my finger on what I believe is some things that is, is uh, in the heart of the leadership here and, and some motion that is going on in the spirit. And I just want to come, my, my objective in this moment is to come along beside you and, and to uh, just come into an agreement with what God is saying and doing 
And I, I just saw a progression of things. Um, one of the things I, I wanted to do, um, I, I, let me see, where am I at? Nine o'clock. Oh. Okay, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to go into this realm and I wanted to take communion, but we're, we'll, I'm going to hold off on that tomorrow because that, that's kind of a, a thing in and of itself. I'm learning to take everything and transfer it or to, to put it within the sphere of eternity. In other words, you know, communion, we take communion in the natural, and it's a good thing and so forth. But mo most all the time, I'm taking communion in another realm. I'm going before the table of the Lord. I visit with friends, family, and, and, and it's, just, it's an, an amazing communion time. And, and if I can, let me just read a passage of Scripture concerning that because it's something that God is bringing us into, into this intense communion with Him. And Jesus was sitting with them, getting ready to go and to the cross, and he was having, or afterwards, and was having communion with them. And he says in, in Matthew 26, 9, it says, But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until, just listen to that, I will not drink of this wine until that day when I drink it new with you in, in my Father's kingdom. So what happened was, is when Jesus rose up from the grave, we were lifted up with him and we were lifted up into the kingdom of God. In other words, the kingdom is in us, but what he was saying, a time is coming that the next time that we commune together won't be on this plane, it will be in a heavenly realm. And so what he did is he brought us out of this earthly communion into a heavenly communion to where we were able to commune with him. And so one of the invitations is, is that you can eat of the bread, you can drink of this cup of life, and you can come to the table of the Lord in another realm. Because when we do it in the natural, it is a natural indication, it's a type and a shadow of a reality of what God has done in the spirit. Are you with me? So when I had, I just, I, I just got to say this a little bit about communion. So before my understanding of communion was kind of sad, was kind of sad, happy, you know, Lord, I just rem do, I'm doing this in remembrance of what you did and just, you know, the pain, the agony, the, you know, all that stuff. And, and I'm not trying to belittle that in no way. It was very intense, but I felt like this joy, this unusual joy that God was wanting to bring me up into. I'm in this moment and I'm having communion in the spirit at the table, Lord. And I look in the table as far as I can see in every direction. I'm seeing family. I'm seeing family that I didn't even know was family and we're just in this huge thing some people I recognized like from this realm others I didn't and we're just there and we're having communion and all of a sudden these two two people that are beside me they jump up on the table and they start doing a jig they just start dancing and, and like they're dancing between, you know, the cups and, and the bread and they're, and they're just like doing this thing, you know, and they're, they're just dancing around and I'm like, whoa, and the next thing I know, everybody's laughing and I'm looking at Jesus and he's just like, you know, just like, you know, hilariously just laughing at all of, and I realize this is the communion of the Lord. That it's not a communion of death, but it's a communion of life. And in that we remember, thank you for, the, for your body. Thank you for the blood, your DNA that is now in us. And that is worth dancing over. And it changed my whole paradigm. It, changed, it shifted something in me concerning what communion was about. And now it's like, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. In other words, the price that I prayed, paid so that you could come up into this divine communion with me in this intimate fellowship and glorious reunion of heaven. So... That's a little peek into what that is, and we're going to do that before we leave. We won't do it tonight. Let me just, let me just give a recap. You know, when I was here, I was prophetically, I'm someone, I, I believe that you, you have to give it, a, you need to keep document, you need to keep account of things that are being said, especially if you're going to be prophetic or whatever, where you have this open accountability of things that are going on. 
one that keeps you in check. It keeps you in tune with things that yes, no, or this happens, this not happening. I realize that sometimes it's like a time capsule. When you take it, it's probably going to trigger some time later. And, uh, but, you know, that's the way it is. Oh, by the way, uh, I was sharing this, I think, in the class. As, you know, before it used to take years, it used to take months that when you would prophetically speak about something or become this oracle, which is a realm of government, that when you begin to release that, it would seem like take a long time to do it. But now, literally, as it leaves your mouth, as the breath comes out of you, as you are projecting, as you are prophesying, as you are speaking in that moment, it's like seemingly before it even gets that far away from you it becomes visible that is the season that you are in that is really the understanding and the definition of the uh of the 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 sower over being overcome by the reaper literally right over top as soon as the thing is planted boom it's right there and 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 what what that is it is increasing glory You see, when increasing glory, it changes the seasons, it changes the time. Time no longer governs as we understand it. All of a sudden, it gets governed by the glory of the Lord. And when you begin to plant and move in that realm of glory, increasing glory, suddenly the thing that used to take a while doesn't take a while anymore. It begins to rise up suddenly. And therefore, I'm redefining what it means that you plant, you know, some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. Imagine it happening all in one second. We, we've been living in this stage of time where it seems like, okay, now we did this, and now we got to go a while for this other thing, and now, yeah, somewhere down the road, God will give the increase. Well, welcome to the increasing glory of the kingdom of God manifesting like we have never seen it manifest before, so therefore your harvest is in your mouth right now. It is in your word right now that as quick as you think it, as quick as you say it, you need to look right in that moment and see it that then we call upon the things that are not as though they are. They already are. Okay, I'm a little excited. So it's important understanding that because of increasing glory that... The, the disunity that appears to be is really an, an illusion. It is an illusion trying to, trying to uh, somehow veil the actual unity that is rising up in the earth. It's not a reality. There is an eternal shift. Every time we, you know, we've been saying that word over and over in its government, and it does. But what, but what you have to look at it, it's like when the earth moves, when the earth, it will shift. And so what happens is it stretches, it stretches, it shifts, it gives way. It stretches, it stretches, it shifts, it gives way. In the natural, we call those earthquakes, but in heaven, it's heaven quakes. It's where all of a sudden the earth gives in to the pull, to the gravity of the glory of God that is pulling on it and it stretches and boom, it yields to the kingdom and glory of God. So you're literally causing things to shift, to shift again and to shift again. And when that shift is going on, just like in a natural earthquake, when it moves, it literally changes the natural contour. Where something was before, it's not there anymore. It actually moves. It's repositioned. And so the government that we are beginning to see right now and that is in us and that is upon the earth, it is repositioning things. It is repositioning you. It is repositioning all of the things that you are a part of. It is repositioning the earth in alignment with the kingdom of God. And so the things that might seem unpleasant, the things that might seem to make you uncomfortable, just realize this, that the intentions of God for you are good and they are not evil. So if you feel like something is being ripped away, only know it's because he's actually bringing you into abundance. So... Prophetically, for a while, I've been speaking about this unusual unity that is rising up, and every time, and I, and I, need, I need to probably just stop here for a minute and say this. 
You know, a few weeks ago, I did a video. I was writing on some things, but I did a meeting, and, and I said, get ready, and I called it the, Lon- the fire of London. And I began to prophetically speak about the fire of London. And how this fire would rise up and, and all of these things. And, and I went back and I related it to in 1666 that there was this huge and intense fire, you know, that, that took place in London. And it was one of the, you know, one of the most intense things in history that they ever encountered. But I started getting these emails as if I had prophetically prophesied like doom and gloom. And I was, and so I had to do this little thing. It was like, look, I'm not a doom and gloom prophet I'm one of, of life I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of the light of glory and, and, and I was using this as an analogy to, to reveal the fact that in Europe and in that land and in that nation that there was a fire of God that was going to rise up And when I see something like that in the natural that happens, I actually look at it as an attempt of the enemy trying to undermine the truth, trying to undermine the reality of this glorious fire that is coming forth. Because make no mistake, there is a fire that is coming forth that is going to manifest this intensity of God's glorious kingdom in ways that we've never imagined. And as we spoke earlier this year, that 2017, something that Tamara had come across, remember we said 2016 was the year of light, and there's been all of these amazing light discoveries, and that 2017 would be the year of fire, and that this was a government that would rise up and it would begin to consume the works of the enemy, and it would bring things into position that were out of place, and it would begin to shift and move. We're seeing that now, a fiery government that is both in the natural and the spirit that is literally consuming and devouring the works of the enemy. Another thing that I declared, and I'm very spontaneous, whether it's in worship, whether it's just like I'm doing now, just making this up, I hope you believe it. Um... (laughs) I mean, it's, it's the way it is, right? You're just kind of like saying this or that or doing whatever, and it just kind of comes out. And, and most of any accuracy that I had, I didn't even know if it was true or not until it happened. But you develop a sense that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that one's true. <laughs> and you just, you just keep following the trail, you know, of, of utterance that you believe is an unction of the spirit and you're just following that but you really don't know for sure that it's the real deal until it actually begins to manifest but you get a sense no I know what's real what's fake but it doesn't mean that you know you can't you know mess it up which I'm good at I was prophetically speaking about this year that we this year would be an unusual season about weather that it would be unpredictable and I, when I was in Florida, I, I was prophetically speaking about the land and, and saying, oh, you've seen the hot and you've seen the heat, but have you seen the cool of the day? Where an unusual coolness will seemingly come in a place in a time where it seems out of place. And I feel like right now we're in that irregular moment where, where, you know, it's like up, down. And I know that we have climatic shifts that take place in the natural, but we're in an unusual climatic shift because this is a sign of a governmental climatic thing. It's up, it's down, it's shifting around. It's, it's like, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, ugh. And, and it just, <laughs> you don't know when to be, not be, or, you know, you just like, come on, God. And that's what transition can be. <laughs> it's the good, the bad, and the ugly, but in the end, you know that it's all good. Why? Because all things work together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So it doesn't matter how ugly something looks in the moment, it's all good. <laughs> so the progressive signs of no decay. I'm just giving you a recap of certain prophetic words that came out of here. A, profet- a, pro- a progressive sign of no decay in the world of science and, supernat- and on the supernatural level. We're beginning to see that. 
decay as you understand it a time is literally shifting and this really rocks a lot of people's boat it's really shifting in a powerful way i don't know if it was here but i've done this a number of times where i was speaking about uh, chromosomes and telomeres and, and i was talking about how the telomeres are like these caps on the chromosomes and the object is is that when the telomeres get shorter you actually begin to age and that aging is because of the reproduction of your cellular of your cells as they they reproduce it creates aging because of this decline that begins to happen the telomeres are then shortened and therefore you age and the Lord says I want you to begin to prophesy to the telomeres I want you to begin to prophesy to the cells because you're not your DNA is not of this realm but it's of a heavenly realm you actually have the DNA of father you have the DNA not of your mother not of your father on the earthly your DNA is another realm so when Jesus bled he didn't just bleed into the ground he bled into you and gave you an, an eternal DNA that would override every other DNA in your in your lineage and so when I was prophetically speaking about this whole thing and, and honestly I don't I, you know like I just do that because I want people to think I might know something and so I just kind of tie it in I mean I it, like I, I kind of go into science and it's not like I'm a, a scientist by no means, but I'm drawn into it. Like I'll be, I'll see something. I'm like, really? Is that actually a thing? And then I'll go and I'll look. Oh, there it is, you know. And I kind of do that. I do that with the word and so forth. And so I'm, I'm prophetically speaking about all these things that were that would rise up. Do you know that this year they just came out? You can Google this. They came out with this uh, capsule. You know this this. It's not a vitamin, but these things in a, in a, you know, in a bottle that they sell, it's called Genesis, and it says, now uh, get your telomeres renewed. Yeah, it's crazy. I was speaking at a thing, and someone said, well, do you know that that's actually a thing now, that they sell this stuff now, that they capsule, the, and, and it's supposed to, like, work on a cellular level and lengthen your telomeres on your chromosomes. I was like, no way, yeah. And they sent me, they sent me the link here just, like, a week ago or so. They sent me the link, and it was there it was, and it's called Genesis. I was like, oh, my gosh. I mean, is he not hilarious or what? Now they have Genesis pills. <sighs> okay, let me leave that for a bit. There was other stuff. I, I don't want to, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a diary thing going on. Um, the, and I'm trying to emphasize uh, the, I, I believe, the importance even of this, this ministry, the platform, the, the influence nationally that you have, the things in the spirit realms, even as they were worshiping, I saw something new coming in. I saw something new happening. I, you know, you, you understand there's certain sounds that produce certain things and open up certain realms and, and, and literally lift, elevate people into this realm of revelation, understanding. So I can just actually just sit in that and live in that wherever, how long you want to keep going on in it. Because I'm just, in that moment, I, my scroll is just getting filled up. And I'm just gaining all of this insight. And I know that all I've got to do is be thinking it and maybe release it or whatever at one level or another. And it'll just come into being. This is the act of being a co-creator with God. <sighs> the heart of the medical... Uh, the, the heart of the medical model is about treating diseases rather than creating health. We know that, right? That, that that's, that's kind of the thing that's going on. Well, there's a shift that has taken place in the natural and reflects something that's going on in the spirit. So I wrote here, as co-creators, the sons and daughters of God, we have the ability to not only create wealth, health, but any other natural aspect of life. Kingdom government hinges on our ability to see and hear rightly. So there, there, there's a phrase I heard, and I love this phrase, and I wrote it down. It says, you are getting younger every year you get older. <laughs> you see, Paul said it like this, therefore do not lose heart that our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. And what I love about this is Paul is not saying that you cannot overcome decay. 
What he's saying is that uh, he's simply stating, do not allow the natural realm to govern you. Because on one hand, something looks older, but on the other hand, it's actually you're a new creation. Old things have passed away. That includes decay. My message is not on decay. I just got this stuff in me, and it just kind of flows out. What I want to zero in real quick is organic and synthetic warfare. Because believe it or not, that even this, when sounds are made, there's a certain field of worship that becomes a warfare, but it's not the warfare that we understand of how something is. It's actually very intimate. Very intimate. So let me just give you a quick, quick definition. Organic, there's many definitions, but this is the one I came up with. Organic is characterized by a continuous or natural development. So in that sense, we are organically moving in intimacy and relationship with God, with God. And it's a natural flow as we gravitate, because the polarity has changed, we gravitate into the kingdom realms of heaven and we're engaging more and more. And because of that, there is an organic revelation of the kingdom of heaven that is the coming up on the earth. Synthetic is characterized by a chemical synthesis especially for the purpose of imitating a natural product. So we're coming out of this synthetic warfare, in other words, an imitation of the real deal. So that means that uh, a, a synthetic, a, a type of synthetic warfare would be... Um, like much of the warfare in church has been a lot of emotion that stems from hurts and wounds of life. So there's a healing process that is going on. And when that, when that shifts, when that changes, when you really get healed in your heart, your whole perception, conception of warfare totally changes. It's just like when, when uh, uh, Pastor Darren was you know, prophetically speaking uh, or singing that song, you know, like, yeah, now, we're in it now. Yeah, this is like, I'm just going to, like, that's the reality. Here we are. We're in this place now. It's, not, it's life and not death. What was the phrase that he was using? Huh? Oh, come on. Somebody has to remember. What is it? I'm on the right side. I'm on the winning side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, therefore it becomes a system, it becomes systematically synthetic. Warfare has become like that. Just stay with me for a minute. Another word for parables is simulation. When Jesus was with the people, he would speak to them, he would simulate the kingdom of God. So he would give them something that was similar to the kingdom of God. He wouldn't speak to them plainly, but he would do it, he would give simulations of what the kingdom of God is. And then he would pull those that are close to him, he goes, I'm not going to speak to you in perils, I'm going to speak to you plainly. So in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you out of a simulation. And simulations are a powerful thing. And, uh, you know, the military and other companies now actually use simulators that give you the feel it's the real deal. And all of these things are involved in its great training. But at the end of the day, it's not the real thing. So there's a shift in our understanding of spiritual warfare. And we're actually coming out of types and shadows. So, what are some of those uh, synthetic things? This might shock some of you. Believing God is in competition with the devil. That is a, that, that is, that is a synthetic a reality. Well, those words don't even fit together. God is, God is appealing to your love he is longing for you to come into the revelation of his love. But it's not like he's competing with the enemy as if he's a worthy an opponent. Another thing is thinking you have to go through some intense warfare process before you can overcome the work of the enemy is, not, is a synthetic understanding. Why? Because I have overcome as he has overcome. 
I am victorious in him now. It's a done deal. It was a done deal before I even came into the awareness of it. But once I came into the awareness of it, I was able to participate with him. And therefore, I become a, 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 a partaker of, a, of the divine nature of God. Whew. Jesus. So the perversion of spiritual warfare comes from seeing the enemy bigger than yourself. <sighs> okay, enough of the synthetic stuff. Let's get into the organic. What is organic warfare? Organic warfare is simply the, uh, one aspect of that is what you were hearing tonight. It is a sound, it is a worship, it is an intimacy to where you're not, you're not really doing it in this realm, you're doing it from another realm, and you're literally gleaming up on the enthronement of God and the sounds around the throne and in the heavenly places and seeing all of those things engaged. In that moment, see, I was stepping into that place and seeing all of these things being rolled up in the heavens and things that were happening in that realm and certain activations that were going on. To me, that is organic Warfare. Who would ever thought that one of your greatest weapons of warfare would simply be love? Love is the greatest warfare agent available to the body of Christ today. God so loved the world that he gave. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that the works of the enemy would be destroyed. Jesus already disarmed powers and principalities of the air, and it was all initiated by the love of God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, gave his life to us. It was love that instigated it in the end. It was love that overcame the work of the enemy. It was love that ripped the veil in two. It was love that gave us access into the heavenly realms, and it is love that will literally wrap the thing up. So there is a work that is in the flesh that is creating this tiring, this gruesome thing of trying to work this and war this and war that. And God is simply saying, I need you to come out of that. Now, I know people who are, you know, and, and I, I give you full permission just to think that I'm just out of my mind and it's not true and leave and be empowered. Okay, so... Uh, so let's look at some organic things. The word of God. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is an organic aspect of the kingdom of God. Even as I release the word, even as you release the word, and you've heard me say this before, I don't even have to release the word all the time, all I got to do is think it. If I think it, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. There is a thinking authority that actually shifts and causes things to move. That is what quantum physics has actually entered into. It realizes that all you had to do was be looking at it. And when you were looking at it, it caused it to shift and move. Which meant that you were simply giving it your intention. And it caused a quantum movement in, in, in the natural. If that's true in the natural, how much more true in the spirit? Are you with me? Joy is a powerful anti-aging. Spiritual warfare component. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We're coming into the revelation of the joy of the Lord like we have never known before. The joy of the Lord is one of the mightiest weapons of warfare ever known to the body of Christ. And there's some people that just scratch their head because they want to be all serious about so many things that are going on. And the Lord is saying, I want to increase your strength. I want to fortify you. So you need to come into some of this laugh or some of this, you know, joy. Laughter makes good like a medicine. It's so healing. It's so virtuous. It brings us into this revelation of who we are. Another organic, powerful warfare release. Sounds like a time capsule. Sounds like a pill. The peace of God. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You see, the reason there's such a call for the peace to enter into the peace of God and the rest of God is because it is one of the major things that literally overcomes the works of the enemy. I did a quick thing. Peace 
is in reference to prosperity of God. It's in reference to uh, coming in, walking in the abundance of God. Shalom. Rest means to settle down. It literally means to settle down, in this case, settle down into the peace of God to desist from warfare. Warfare people don't like this message, but I got to do this. <laughs> See, we are actually, even though all of this unity and all of these climatic things are going on in this nation and other nations of the world, it is an illusion because there is a peace reign that is about ready to manifest upon the earth. Some unusual activity that is about ready to, to take place unlike we've ever seen. And right now in this nation, even the current natural regime that is in place, it is actually making way for the peace to come in th through a doorway and in a manner that people will say we never saw it coming. <sighs> Whether you like Trump or not, putting the whole political thing aside, there is this unusual alignment that is coming to the, into the earth where it doesn't matter how hard you fight. Mark this word down. It doesn't matter how hard it gets resisted. It doesn't matter how many things pile up against it and say, we're not going to let this change happen. We're not going to let this governmental shift take place. We're not going to let this in. The harder you fight it, the stronger it becomes. That is the same element. That was upon David. And there is this element, this heart thing that I believe that people are coming into more. That they're coming into this realization of this unusual thing. They don't understand it because of all of this stuff that is, that is, that is happening in the natural. But it's creating an alignment and it is making preparation for the spirit of Solomon. To come upon the land. David was a man of war. He went in and he cleaned house. And he created things. Caused them to come into an alignment. And at the end of his reign. There was a level of peace. It says that he ceased from all of the. Uh, or the, the you know the battles of the. Or the, the work of his enemies. And then what it did is it made a platform for Solomon to come in. And begin to reign. Solomon was not a man of war, but he was a man of peace and he was a man of wisdom and understanding. And therefore there are, there is a level of wisdom and understanding that is rising up in the earth. There are children right now, we were sharing, let me just say this quickly about Josiah's fire. If you haven't read his, had the read her book or whatever, it's an amazing book. And Josiah gets, he's an autistic boy and has been autistic since 22 months old, but has this amazing encounters with heaven, with God and is able to write on this iPad uh, with his index finger all of these glorious things. He goes to school with other children that are around his age and they're in this heavenly realm being taught about all of these kingdom things and they represent, as I was reading this, I was like, that is the age of Solomon right there. There is a wisdom, there is a glory, there is a peace, there is a reality of the life and heart of God that is being equipped and trained right now in the spirit that will come and they will take their place. And mind you that maturity I've got to say this That maturity I remember when Tamara and I Had been listening to, to this on the audio Because you know we travel so much Or we're moving around so much And so we were listening to this audio And the Lord spoke to me in advance And he says Michael You need to humble yourself in this sense That this is a child and so no matter how great No matter how grander Everything that's going on around In your life I want you to get this because I want you to see what I am doing and about ready to do. And so, in other words, he was like, I want this child to teach you something. So I postured myself. We both did. It was like, okay, you know, let's do this. And we just start going through the story. And as you get through the deal, all of a sudden these things unlock. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. This is awesome. This is glorious. You see, maturation is not about age. It has been about age because of immaturity. 
But maturation isn't a person that has to go through all these years of learning. I'm not, I'm not trying to create a negative about that, but that's like having to go a long way around. It's like, it's like, it's like counseling. You can, you can get counsel of the spirit of something that is happening in the moment and will happen in the future or even something about your life or whatever, or you can sit down and go through a counseling session. You can still eventually get there, but it'll take you longer to do so. Or you can just get the download or engage in the spirit and literally move into the revelation knowledge of that thing that you need to get over, get past, get through or whatever, and God can do it in a moment. They're both, they're both effective. They both can produce life. But God is saying, I, I don't want you to go around the mountain again and again. Are you good? So when we're talking about the shift and we're talking about things moving and changing, we're realizing that there's something super, you know, I'm using the word organic and synthetic because we're being brought out of the sensation of feeling like we're, we've been doing, you know, this and that. And, and a lot of it, again, is based on a lot of emotion. But the fact is, it's simply because of who you are. You are a son. You are a daughter of God. It's who you are in the spirit, in the kingdom. And so, Father, we just acknowledge that right now. We just acknowledge that alignment that has taken place. Solemn, we invite you right now. We declare, let the reign of David continue. Let the, let the Goliaths be brought down. Let all of the obstructions that are in the way, let them be removed. Let them be pushed out of way. But don't let them be pushed out of, way, out of the way through hate or demise or despite, but let them be pushed out of the way through love. Let there be a restoration that comes upon this nation and other nations of the world where we begin to see a people that will love like they have never loved before. And let it make room for the, for the wisdom of Solomon to rise up into the this place where this uncanny insight and revelation of the Father's heart of the kingdom of God begins to uh, appear on the earth as it is in heaven. And so we thank you right now for the emergence of all of the courts. We thank you for the emergence right now of all of the layers, of all of the dimensions of the kingdom of God, that as they are layered in us, that they flow out of us. And just like the song that was being sung, that these layers flow out of us like a river. And as this river flows out, it reveals the depths, it reveals the height, the width, and the breadth of the life of the glory of God and his kingdom. And we just give you praise for that, Father. We just give you praise. We give you praise for the motion. We give you praise for this reality of your kingdom, of your spirit, of your breath. Just thank you for your breath. The words that I speak to you are spirit or life. I'm just hearing these words of Jesus out of John 6, 63. The words that I speak to you are spirit, they are life. And when I say that, all of a sudden I'm seeing a picture of the word of God. The word of God is like, all, is like a body, and a body that has all of these, like our body has all of these parts and organs and cells and pieces in it. And it's like looking at that word and going, the, the words that I speak to you are spirit, they are life. They are all of the different parts parts of who I am and so father we recognize that embodiment right now that you are in us and that we are in you and that in you we live and we're moving and we're having our being and that we're not governed by time and space but it is coming under our feet and therefore this uh, this thing called decay is slowly slowly been eaten away by the life of the spirit the consuming glory Unusual lights that are beginning to happen, even the songs that have been sung about light is actually activating light, is redefining what light is. You are being redefined because you are the light of the world. And now there are certain, certain uh, 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 things that have been interfering, that have been interrupting that are standing. Right now I'm seeing this, that's, that, that there's some of you here that you're, you're looking for resolve, you're looking for answers, solutions. 
You're needing them right now. If you are in a place in your life right now where, you're, where you, just, you, you, you need this one uh, thing solved or this, this understanding, I want you to just stand up into it. And maybe there's somebody else that as you're just, you've been plagued with this, uh, with this physical issue in your body. Some of you in the hip, some of you in the knee. I'm just seeing certain joints where it's just really been bothering you. Some are dealing with certain arthritis, but you look at it as an obstacle, as something that just seems like it comes, it goes, like, okay, I'm, and then it's back again. And just all of these different things that are going on. If that's you, just stand up into this resolution right now that is in the spirit of where you are at. And as you stand up, you're standing up into the resolve. You're standing up into the revelation of the light of God that it is finished. And I just want you to just see that echoing through your body, this light that is just rushing through you now like a river. It's almost like you open up and you just, you just let the river flow through your mouth and just let it flow through your body and begin to literally ignite it. Relationally, you've been challenged. You've, you've been like warring with certain things. There's, there's an instance in your life where, where you let go, but yet it's still haunting you and it still keeps trying to hold you down and you wish you should have, could have, would have, whatever the case is, and you're trying to leave the past behind, but it keeps following you like a barking dog, like a dog barking at your heels. If that's you, just stand up right now into the resolve because there's a shift that has taken place and you are being released from the old. You're being released from a soul tie right now that has been trying to hold you back and is trying to keep you from moving forward into the revelation of a son of a daughter of who you are in the spirit in the kingdom of God and we just give you praise we just give you praise you see right now what's happening there's a shift inside of you there's a shift in this place there's a shift that is going on in this earthen vessel is this treasure, and this treasure that is inside of you right now is shifting you. It's shifting you into this position, and this is how I want you to see it. It's not like God is moving you into that place. You have, already, you have always been in that place. You just haven't aligned yourself with that place. And right now, what is happening, there is, there is angel chiropractors here right now. God, Jesus, the chiropractor of all right now is creating an alignment in you and bringing you in an alignment with the finished reality of the kingdom of God that has been given to you, the breath of God that is released to you. You, and therefore I'm prophetically prophesying to you and agreeing with you that these things that have become an obstacle are now going to literally just dissipate right before your eyes. <clears throat> just give you praise, Father. We just give you praise. We just give you praise. I'm sensing right now just a great loss, a great departure. It's, it's, it's like a happy but yet a sad because of the absence. And right now the Lord is saying, look, I want to I comfort you. I want to bring you into this place where you can literally, it's like you've lost a loved one. You've lost, uh, could be a child, it could be, you know, a parent or just, you know, something that has been close to you or someone that is close to you. And it just seems like this morning, this thing that you've just been going through for a while now and it's literally tried to, to take your breath away or almost make you feel lifeless right now. If you just stand up, you stand up into the resolve, into the shift that God is bringing you into this place of life. Just give you praise, Father. Just give you praise. Give you praise. I know oftentimes finances can be a big issue. Sometimes it feels like a roller coaster. You're on top, you're on the bottom, you're halfway up, and it just seems like this constant movement. And that, that erratic thing that seems to go on your life literally creates a stress upon your body. And it's not so much of what looks like with or without. It is literally your perspective of that, how it really is. And I just see God saying, I want to shift you into a right perspective of how these things work where they don't govern you, but you govern them. And 
you don't let the illusion of something that seems to be absent try to govern you or govern what is going on in your life, but you rise above it into the abundance, into the government of my, of my kingdom right now that is in you. So if you feel like you're going through that erratic season in your life, even financially, where it, for it feels good, no, not so good, bad, okay, here we are. I want you to stand up right now, and as you do, there is a shift that will take place in your life where it will shift you out of the emotion of the lie of lack. And I declare to you that you lack for nothing. <sighs> mm. Jesus. Mm. Hmm. See these garments. I got this thing in, in a book that I wrote called The Garments, The Wardrobe of Heaven. And, and, and there's, there's times and seasons where all of a sudden these angelic, they just move upon the earth and they carry these garments and they take off the old and they put on the new. And right now there's new garments. They're here and they're handing out new garments. And if you will just, if you will just take on by faith, just see how, how you just literally just take off this old thing that has tried to be a garment on your life that is not of the Lord, is not, it is not his mantle, it is the mantle of the world. And just relieve, take that off right now and receive the garment that you are needing. Is it health? Is it finances? Is it relationships? Is it breakthroughs in the spirit to where you're wanting to move into these? Just take it on right now because they're handing them out and they're saying there's plenty, there's there's plenty, there's plenty, there's no short. Now just take whatever you need, ask freely, and it will be given to you. Ask and you shall receive. And so just receive, we just receive right now. We receive, even as I said that, you see, you're opening certain things up in the spirit. I'm seeing certain things. I just saw a big, big mantle that's been laid over this place right here. Like just laying this garment over it. And all of a sudden as it was laid over it, it just, it just like dissolved into it. <sighs> Give you praise. 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 I'm just, I'm just giving, um, I, I just, all I'm doing is just giving time to acclimate to this. See, if you don't give enough time to acclimate to something that is really being, you're in, that is in transition in your life, then you'll, t you'll go out of it too easily. You'll go back to the old. So acclimate yourself right now to, to this, to this old things that passed away, all things that become new. No matter what it was 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, an hour ago, a day ago, or a week ago, acclimate right now to this new thing that you're, this revelation that you've come into, that you've been blessed with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, that you're not having to cry out for God to give you something that he has not already given to you, and all you're doing is coming into an alignment with this blessed realm of the kingdom of God that is in you and that is rising up. Children right now, the children that have wandered away, that have, that have got pulled away because of this and that, because of hurts and pains and abuses, whatever the situations are, got pulled away, and you've been crying out for them to come in. Look, they're coming in right now. Just stand up into that return. Stand up into uh, that family reunion. Family reunion. Listen, I'm not saying these things lightly. All of this keeps me from doing this, just going from each individual and doing all this thing. We're just, we're just sweeping this place right now with the prophetic revelation of the insight of God toward your life and his desire to see you come in to the fullness that he has afforded you through his life, through his blood, through his son. So we give you praise, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. Jesus. Mm, I hear the sound of rain. I know this is crazy, but I, I keep hearing the raindrops keep falling on my head. Mm -hmm. Yes, raindrops keep falling. 
on my head. Yeah. Mm. Jesus. Let it rain. Let it rain. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just keep hearing this. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah, let it be. Whispering words of wisdom. Let it be. Yeah. Let it be. Yeah. It's like amen. 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 Let it be, let it be, let it be. Let it be, so be it. So let it be. So let it be. So it is. So it is. Yeah. These are words of wisdom, whispering words of wisdom. Yeah, so let it be. Jesus. Glory. Thanks so much, Michael. So what a great word. And thank you for joining us online. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, the last night until summer break. So bring out a friend um, and a water gun, and we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. God bless you guys. Good night.